Lewandowski's been picked out. Socks down to his ankle. Picks out Stansfield! That's the hat trick! And that's what dreams are made of! Hello, everybody, and welcome to Park Life, the official Exeter City podcast. Since Christmas, the Grecians finally ended their winless streak with a huge victory over Wickham Wanderers. A draw with Pompey followed before a disappointing loss at Reading. The boys have got a huge task on their hands against Carlisle this weekend. So let's get straight into it. Coming up in today's show, Mark Dennis from the View from the Bank blog joins me to discuss City's recent results and look ahead to Carlisle on Saturday. City winger Dion Rankin joins me after scoring his first professional goal before Lee Rooney from the Brunton Bugle podcast brings us some insight on Carlisle United. Mark, welcome to Park Life. Thanks for coming on again. Uh, the last few weeks have been a bit mixed for the Grecians. A 13-game winless run ended by a fantastic victory over Wickham Wanderers, then followed up by a, a great draw against Portsmouth and 0-0 a clean sheet against the league leaders. Unfortunately, though, Monday's defeat to Reading saw City slide into the relegation zone. What do you make of the recent results? They're a bit of a mixed bag. Very much a mixed bag, yeah, over, over Christmas or the festive period, Tom. Um, I was really pleased with that Wickham win, obviously, as we all were. Um, I know there was a lot made after the game, wasn't there, of how the players celebrated and how the fans celebrated. <laughs> but for me, that was fully justified. If, if you were on a 13-game run where you haven't won a game, you can just imagine the relief that's going to be pouring out of those players and the joy of actually winning a game. So... That was obviously, as you say, followed up by um, the Pompey game, which I thought we played really well. Um, you know, maybe we didn't create loads of chances, but I think we restricted Pompey as well, and they didn't create a lot of chances. Um, good point. Anyone would have taken that before the game. I think anyone who says any different is lying. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, yeah, we went into the Reading game full of optimism, really, and I, I had a good feeling about that game. Um, and I couldn't make it, unfortunately, but I watched it on iFollow. Uh, I thought we played really well, particularly in the first half. Um, it was just a shame that we, they got their noses in front early on there, which was a bit of a poor goal to concede. Just sort of one long ball into our defence, wasn't it? And nice little bit of interplay and bang 1-0. But to our credit, we came back. And I thought that first 35 minutes of that game was the best actual football we've been we've played for quite some time. So... Yeah, I know people are negative because we've dropped into the bottom four, but I do see the last three games that there's some improvement there in the performance. Um, and I'm just hoping we can push on. Hopefully not the players won't let it get to them too much that we've dropped into that bottom four. Obviously, Saturday's massive. Uh, that's a massive. I know we've been saying that for months now, but Saturday is massive. <laughs> and January as a whole is massive, I think. But I think everyone at the club's um, fully aware that that's the case. Yeah, well, absolutely. Uh, let's focus in a little bit on, on each of those three results a little bit more. Um, the Wickham result, I know you said, uh, well, felt massive, really. I think everybody felt that. Um, a goal for, for Sonny Cox, a first goal after coming back from his loan spell at Yeovil. A fantastic penalty save from Vilsin Asalo. Two players who we really needed then and came in clutch uh, just when it really mattered the most. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Sonny, since he's come back from the Oval, has been fantastic, I think. He looks looks just much more confident and his all-round game just seems to have upped a little bit. He, he, you know, he's holding the ball up well when he can up front. He's making runs, chasing. Um, you can just really see that his confidence levels have, have shot up. Um, and Vil, yeah, with that uh, penalty save, I couldn't believe it when the penalty <laughs> got given. Um, either I was up in the big bank and... Sometimes it's difficult to see down the far end yeah. exactly what's going on. But it, I could see from the bank that Harry Kite poked that ball away and I just could not believe it when uh, that penalty was given. And it, it felt a little bit like this is City's luck again. Yeah. But thankfully, Ville saved us as he's, as he's done quite often this season. And he's um, had a fantastic season, really. Yeah, justice served, if, if you ask me. Yeah, 100%. Um, another player who's had a really good few weeks, actually, probably starting... Um, with that uh, draw against Stevenage uh, away at the Lamex. Czech Diabate, ever since he's come into the side, since the, the team has really moved to a back four. Um, but, I mean, Czech Diabate at the, at the heart of the defence has been absolutely wonderful to watch. Um, 
and, and just seems to be mopping up everything that, that goes towards him. Yes, you know, Reading probably wasn't the best te- defensive team performance, but certainly in the, in the few games that had preceded that game, Cech Diabate looks a new man. Definitely. And I think even that Reading game, like you, like you say, Tom, it wasn't maybe the best team defensive display, but I still felt like Czech had a good game individually. He's getting his head on everything as well. It's anything that's coming in the box. He's, he seems to be like the first point of contact, really. If it's coming in the box, Czech's going to head it away. And against Pompey, he was, I thought he was superb against Colby Bishop as well, he, considering how many goals he's scored this season and what a handful he is. Um, Czech dealt with him really well, I thought. Um, I just hope he gets a run now. I just hope he stays in that either back three or back four, whatever it is. I think we need to make him the focal point now of that defence. And, and hopefully, I don't know what contract situation is like, but I know he's out of contract at the end of the season. So let's just hope we can get him tied down ASAP because I, th- I think we really could build a defence around him for the next two or three seasons. Yeah, for sure. And um, I suppose onto, onto that Reading game. Um, yeah, I mean, come on, the, the defensive performance wasn't great. We all know that. But in terms of going forward, the, the attacking display was probably the best that we've seen in, in recent weeks and months, if we're totally honest. Two goals scored for the first time in forever. A absolute beauty from Zach Jules and Dion Rankin with a pretty smart finish as well. Two really important goals, two good goals that we haven't scored a lot of recently. No, that's right. It, uh, I can't remember. It was the first time we scored two goals since the, the previous Reading game, wasn't it? So, yeah, it must have been. So, yeah, that was a long time coming, um, but fully deserved. And that's how I, I do still think it was a harsh result on us. I think a 2-2 would have been fair. Um, as you say, Zach, with that absolute thunderbolt from the uh, <laughs> edge of the box, which... And, and that's I'm glad he's got a goal, actually, because I think the last few games as well, he's another player that I think's played really well. Um, I think it was particularly the the Portsmouth game as well. I remember sort of at the end of the game thinking, is it Czech or is it Zach from Allen Match? It was a little bit between the two. Um, so I'm really pleased he got a goal. And I think he's been quite consistent performer, really. He's gone under the radar a little bit. Um, and the same with Dion. I think he's starting to show more signs of an end product in the last couple of weeks. Um, he seems to, again, be, he's obviously come back from his injury, hasn't he? And he, he seems to be picking up his confidence again. Um, but like you say, from an attacking point in the first half, particularly, I thought Tom Carroll and Reese Cole were finding Ilmari and Dion with like quite regularly, really, and they were managing to get in behind. It was just, just couldn't quite convert those chances when they were through on goal. But I, I thought it was promising signs on on the Reading game. Yeah, two goals scored, but no points collected. Uh, the defeat sees City fall into the relegation zone, as I'm sure you know. Um, <laughs> how difficult do you think it will be for the side to climb out of it? And we'll come on to Carlisle a little bit later. But there's a lot of teams who are who are fighting it out in that relegation area at the moment, down at the bottom of, of League One. Lots of sides who are picking up some good results. Uh, Wickham with a with a win. Uh, you saw Carlisle actually uh, get a win against Port Vale at the weekend. Yeah. I mean, Reading, of course, beating us. Teams do seem to be picking up points. Yeah, I think that's that's maybe what's changed. I think obviously we were on our poor run and we were managing to stay out of the relegation zone. And those four teams that were in the bottom four just they were also they just kept losing as well or, or not picking up three points. Um, now, you know, obviously there's a couple of things that have happened. Cheltenham changed their manager, didn't they, I believe? And they've picked up a couple of couple of wins. I think Fleetwood, yeah, they changed the manager as well, actually. Yeah. And they've Twice picked already. up a little. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they've picked up a little as well. And Reading, I think, are on a pretty good run. I, I think, is it the last four or five games? I think they've got a couple of wins and a couple of draws. So they're looking like they're potentially going to pull themselves out of it, unless, unless there's any more points deductions or anything like that. I don't know what's going on with Reading. But I think with City, yeah, it will be a fight. But I think this is why Saturday's game is really important. I think if we can get three points against Carlisle straight away, and if we can move straight back out of that relegation zone rather than sit there for a few weeks, um, I think it would definitely be for the best, to be honest, just, just for confidence as well. And I think we've got two winnable home games this this next few weeks, um, Carlisle and Cambridge, we, we, I think we've got to aim for six points from those. We have to. <laughs> As I say, these last three performances have definitely been improved. And as, as we've said already, yes, we lost against Reading, but we played well in spells, looked good going forward at times. 
So I think we just need to take that into this game against Carlo. Obviously, shore up a bit at the back. Um, I'm guessing, I don't know what Will Ames, I'm guessing Will Ameson might be back in maybe for the weekend. Um, so I think that's, yeah, need to be tight at the back. And I can see, I'm hopeful of a 1 0 win. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll have to see, <laughs> won't we? Um, you know, that's all that we can do on the pitch. Um, but I think the team probably need a little bit of help off of it. Gary's already mentioned that already. Um, I'm, of course, talking about the the January transfer window, which is going to be huge for all of the teams down the bottom. Um, it's a, a window that we've got to take advantage of. And we have already because City have made their first January signing earlier today, um, as we record on the Wednesday. Luke Harris arrives on loan from Fulham, a teenager with an awful lot of talent, just 18 years old, uh, but has already made four Premier League appearances and has been called up to the Welsh senior squad as well. And not only that, he's good mates with Stano. How good of an acquisition do you think Luke Harris is? On paper, this one looks really good. Um, I know we were supposedly in for him in the summer, weren't we? And this was the deal that, well, one of the deals that fell through right at the final hurdle. Mm -hmm. Um, I listened to his interview actually before we came on and he, he sounds like he's happy to be here. It sounded like he wanted to be here in, in August, to be, yeah. to be fair to him. Um, he classes himself as a goal scorer and, you know, we need one of those. So um, let's hope he can produce the goods. But as you say, his pedigree being called up for Wales senior squads, I, I looked at his um, record for Fulham's youth teams. He's like scored hatfuls of goals mm-hmm. for them. Um, obviously, he's made a couple of sub appearances as he won in the Premier League this season. So he's obviously highly thought of by Fulham. Um, and I'm guessing Stano's loan last season has persuaded them to uh, allow us his talent for a few months. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it sounds like we've got a good relationship with Fulham. And uh, if they keep coming as good as Stano, then I think we've, uh, we're on to something there. Um, but yeah, hopefully Luke can, can hit the ground running. He described himself as a goal scorer. So let's hope he can, he can bag a few. He sounded confident. So, um, you know, I, I think a goal scorer is what we need. Um, but it's also a chance for City to strengthen in a, in a variety of areas. Where do you think um, Gary, Marcus and the team should, should be looking at, at to, to strengthen? Yes, yeah, so I, I do think I agree with you, Tom. I think we need a few signings um, to give us a realistic chance of getting out of this sort of mess we're in at the minute. I think we need a couple of strikers. Um, whether, whether we're classing Luke Harris as one of those, I'm not sure. Um, but I think we need a couple of strikers, someone that can put the ball in the net regularly. I know they're not easy to come by, but um, I was just I feel like we need a different type of striker as well. Someone who we could bring on if we're under the cosh, that we can get the ball up to them, they can hold it up, bring others into play, you know, like with the Dion's and Ilmaris running off them. Um, so I think a couple of strikers would be good. Um, I still feel like we need something maybe more in, in midfield as well, maybe like a, more of a holding midfielder to break up attacks. Um, I think Reese Cole and, and Carroll have been playing quite well, actually, the last couple of games. But sometimes I feel like we just need something else in there, just like a little little bit of bite and some mm-hmm. tackling in that midfield. I, I suppose especially um, with Trevitt gone back to, to Brentford now to recover from his injury. Exactly, yeah. So he's going to be a miss. Um, so we need to get him replaced as well. And I think maybe someone in the wide positions. Um, obviously, as you will have seen in the blog, like I mentioned, Dimitri has been such a miss because he was on fire. And, you know, we got Zach that's sort of wing back and sometimes left back, he's, but he's doing an admirable job. And then Ilmari's playing over there sometimes, but I feel like he's more suited to the right, not the left. Um, so I think, yeah, maybe like a left sided attacking player. Or, or wing back type would be good as well, um, and yeah, and, and maybe a defender. <laughs> maybe a... <laughs> I've just got this feeling it, it's been bugging me all season um, that Alex Hartridge might get a couple of bids in in this window because he's out of contract in the summer. So if that happens and Alex does was to move on, I think we would want another defender in there as well just to to back up. Yeah. Improvements all over the pitch. Uh, we'll have to see. It's, a, it's clearly a big, uh, a big window uh, for for Gary, Marcus, uh, all of the the team involved in, in bringing players into the squad. And hopefully, by the end of January, we'll have a, a squad capable of uh, of 
keeping us, well, taking us firstly, but then keeping us out of the relegation zone. Mark, thank you so much for joining me on Park Life this week. Uh, it's been great to to hear all of your, your insight and uh, uh, a final chance to, to promote the blog. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm still blogging sort of every couple of weeks um, on Twitter. It's at View from the Bank. Um, you can find me on there. And yeah, it's just basically my my views on what on what's going on. Not everyone will agree with me, but that's uh, as my granddad always used to tell me: football's a game of opinions. <laughs> <laughs> well, keep up the good work. I've certainly enjoyed reading it, and I know that that many do as well. So, thank you so much for joining me, uh, Mark. And uh, well, we'll I'll have to see uh, if we can get a win on Saturday. I'm hopeful, Tom. <laughs> Next, I'm joined by City winger Dion Rankin after scoring his first goal for the club. Dion, welcome to Park Life. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, I wish I could be talking to you off the back of a three-match unbeaten run, uh, but a narrow defeat at, at Reading put a stop to that. Now you've gone away, reviewed the game. What are your thoughts on, on the performance? I think after the game, obviously, we were very down, a uh, really frustrating one to take. But I think looking back at it, it wasn't that we played terribly the whole game and that um, we were completely just beaten on, like just hands up, just beaten. It was more our individual mistakes that were just causing us to, you know, have problems in the game. And I think there's still positives to look back on the game. There's po- a lot of positive moments, positive actions that we've done in the game that we can really look back on and sort of bring into the next game. Yeah, I, I know that Gary mentioned those individual errors. I suppose that does make it a little bit frustrating. And of course, you, you, know, you don't want to get on your teammates' backs. Um, but it is it is frustrating when there is quite a good overall team performance. But unfortunately, it, these things happen. Individual errors do sometimes cost the, the team an important result. Yeah, but they're all things we can iron out. So it's it's rather small problems that we can fix rather than it all falling apart. But I get, I guess the defeat, against Reading it comes as a, a bit more of a sucker punch because when you consider the recent results that the team had come off a, a win against Wickham a really good draw against Portsmouth as well pl- plus a clean sheet that must make things a little bit frustrating and I suppose there'll be some people who will talk about the mentality is it still good D- does it feel like the positivity is still there after those results yeah it is I think obviously at the time it feels like you know a punch in the chest but we're very strong mentally and I think we'll be able to just bounce back and sort of just take the positives from the game take the positives from the game before and just we're raring to go for the next one and despite losing at Reading it must have been an incredible feeling to score your first goal for the club and your first in professional football yeah it's so good to finally get my first goal and my family there to see it so it's it's a big moment for me and I feel like it's just hopefully first of many yeah, well, absolutely. And whilst we're thinking positively, let's focus in a little bit on those two really positive results. Wickham, a big victory, of course. Sonny Cox coming back from Yeovil, making an, an immediate impact. And Vilsen Asalo, I mean, what more can you say? A brilliant penalty save. And I think you played really well in that game as well. Talk to me about the, the mentality that was brought into that game and how everyone felt after, because it felt like a, a weight off of a lot of fans' uh, shoulders. I know that. Yeah, 100%. It was like we would had so many difficult games, so many difficult results. To finally get that win, it it just it gives everyone a boost. And especially sort of the way it happened with sort of the penalty happened again and we're all thinking, oh my gosh, here we, here we go again. And then Ville comes up and it's just, it gives you an extra boost. And I think it's, it's so, it was so good to have that. And it's definitely a weight off our shoulders. I'm keen to zoom out a little bit and talk about your hopefully very exciting career trajectory. You're 21, playing regular League One football and have just scored your first professional goal. You're obviously on loan from Chelsea uh, for this season. So how do you see your pathway towards the top of the game? Obviously, I have my goals if I want to play at the highest level that I possibly can. But it's difficult to sort of see that when you, you're you in... It's hard to explain it. But I mean, when I'm, I try to live in the present sort of thing. So if I take every every game as I can, try and perform it every every moment that I can, and I take every season as it goes. So I having having this season extra, I think it's my my first season um, playing professional football. So it's it's really just step by step, sort of trying to build my way up to the level where I think I can play. And of course, you've had quite an interesting career already. You started off at Cambridge at youth level. I believe I'm right in saying, and then making that that move to Chelsea. It, just talk to me about 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 that process as well, moving from one academy to the other. It's obviously an academy that has produced some outstanding players in recent years. Yeah, I was from Cambridge from uh, nine years old to 14. 
So I spent sort of my early years playing football at Cambridge and then got that sort of big move to Chelsea. And I think it was just, it just helped me develop as a person and a player a lot. So moving away from home and everything. So it's been good to sort of just develop more. Yeah, and you've been with Exeter for, for quite a while now, ever since that, that day surfing down in Cornwall. Um, and I know that, that things haven't always uh, gone your way. That injury in particular, just talk to me about the process of, of coming back from that, because I know you were you were back at, at Chelsea to recover from that. But I mean, clearly you've, you've come back and, and tried to make an impact. Talk to me about the, the, that process, because it, it, it must be quite a difficult one to take for, for any professional footballer. Yeah, it was it was definitely quite difficult. I feel like I'd finally sort of settled down here and then I had that injury and I had to go back. And so it was it was a difficult time and it was my first injury. So there was a lot going on. But I think it was good to have um, the Chelsea staff to help me recover properly and everything, make sure everything was in order before I came back. And I think it's just been it's been good because I feel confident in it now and I'm just raring to go again. Yeah, and I suppose that that injury came at a time when when that, when City were actually playing really well. I mean, nearing top of the league at, at that point in the season, and of course you missed a lot of those games during the the thirteen game unbeaten run. What was it like to to come back to the club, even at a quite a difficult time? Mm, I was obviously keeping up with results and the games. I was really it was really frustrating to feel helpless in a way that I couldn't sort of help and and play. So I think I was just raring to get back it was sort of seeing the team that was struggling it was like oh I feel helpless like I can't help but now when I got as soon as I got back it's like okay I want to get back in and just get get looking forward to playing so I was quite positive in that way obviously of I want to play I want to help sort of thing it certainly feels like now now you are back from that injury back at the club um it feels like you're starting to get your the best out of yourself at Exeter City uh, the assist for Yannick at Stevenage w was excellent um you played brilliantly against Wickham and Portsmouth and then a first goal at Reading do you feel like you're starting to build that confidence now yeah I think I'm finally starting to find my feet I feel like I've got my fitness back to where it was before so I think I'm starting to find my feet and feel more confident in the way I'm playing and before you head back to Chelsea at the end of the season, there's still loads of work to do. Um, I'm sure you're aware that City slips into the relegation zone after the defeat to Reading. Um, I'm guessing that they'll have to just desperate to climb out of it and stay out of it over the next few weeks. Yeah, I think we're we're confident in what we can achieve. We know what we have to do. And I think with the way we can play, we don't deserve to be in the relegation zone. So I think as long as we knock our heads together and play the way we can play, we'll, we'll be just fine. Yeah, well, hopefully, and a chance to make amends as we host Carlisle United at the park on Saturday. Uh, your teammate, Zach Jules, uh, said that you have to go out there on Saturday and win it. Is that the general consensus in the dressing room? Yeah, yeah he said it perfectly. Just got to go out there and win. Yeah. Nothing, no two ways about it, really. And how are the lads preparing for that? I guess it feels like a, a huge week in training. Yeah, it's a very important week. It's a game that we have to win, so we're just all ready to go. Yeah. Desperate for it. Well, uh, Dion, thank you so much for joining me uh, on Park Life. It's been a pleasure and uh, best of luck on Saturday. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Finally, I'm joined by Lee Rooney from the Brunton Bugle to get the lowdown on Carlisle. Lee, welcome to Park Life. Thanks so much for joining us. Carlisle have had a pretty interesting season from an outsider's perspective, which goes beyond the on-field performances. After gaining promotion to League One last season, I think most people thought that you'd be battling against relegation this season. And that's exactly what has happened, really. Now, under new yeah. ownership, just talk to me a little bit about your first season back in League One and, and how it's gone so far. Yeah, I mean, getting promoted in the first place, Tom, was very unexpected in the sense that Simpson came in and saved us from relegation. Um, what did the season you guys went up or promoted? Or was it the season before you got promoted? I can't remember. But um, yeah, he basically saved us from relegation. Did an incredible job, got the job full time. And then last season, the job he did was just remarkable. We had a bottom six budget in League Two and managed to get promoted in the playoffs. And, you know, at one point, we looked like we were going to be top three. We just lost a little bit of steam. But, you know, everyone says going up through the playoffs is the best way to do it anyway. So we, we enjoyed it. Um, but going into this season, the problem is, even though the budget increased, we still had a bottom six budget for the division we're in. So where we are right now is probably right about where we should be, really, in that sense. Um, but off the field, it, I think it was actually the first game that they attended was the game against you guys in in August at Brunton Park. Um, potential new owners had turned up to watch our games. And um, they've basically been in talks to the club since about February. 
So it's been a long, long process. And to be fair, that they, they, they've really applauded the club and the sports trust for the due diligence they've done on them. They said, you know, they've done the right thing for you, for the club to to make sure we're the right people. And finally, that was confirmed in November. Um, and already they're investing massively into the club in terms of off the field stuff, but also on the pitch as well in terms of, you know, we signed Luke Armstrong, and you might want to talk about in a minute, you know, he'll probably be making his debut in this game. And, you know, we, we haven't paid as much as Wrexham we're going to pay for him, to be fair. <laughs> from what from what we've heard, Harrogate were not very happy with Wrexham in the way they handled it. So they basically, they said they were quite happy to sell him to us for a, a smaller fee, shall we say. Still not a, a small fee, a smaller fee. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, off the field, I mean, like an example, yeah, I'm, I'm showing you this on, on the camera we're talking here, but <laughs> A cup. They've made these cups, basically these ones with uh, this know. phrase "own oh, the north," which is what they said. And you get them in a match day now. When you when you buy your beer, you can take them home with you if you want. And you know, they've, they've, like around the club, there's so many different things they've done in terms of improving the fan zone and you know sprucing the place up a little bit. It's bit you know, it's, it's need a bit of bit of uh, a love and uh, care for a few years now, and it, it's finally getting it from from them. And there's a real positive feeling about what we can do in this January window. To, you know, to have Armstrong signed up at the start of December ready to play in this game here. And it sounds like we could have two or three more potentially signed up before the game as well. There's a feeling of, up until about December, we didn't look a million miles off. We, no one was battering us. We, we were losing a lot of games 1-0, and it was just kind of like, oh, if we could just get ourselves up, we just need a little bit more quality in attack, just something to maybe get us a bit further up. And then we lost Callum Guy to a long-term injury, and he's a massive player for us, you know, in terms of the way he screens the back four from midfield. And we haven't really replaced him. We haven't got anyone who can replace him in the team. And we, we did have a couple of hammerings after that. And we're hoping we'll have someone in to replace him very soon because he's up for nine months. But generally, we, we've, yeah, it, it's been frustrating in that sense that we, 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 at times we've looked like we're not that far off. But then the last couple of months, I think as much as anything, the fact that we haven't got results has really dented confidence in the players. And the players, their confidence has dropped. And as a result, the performances have dropped a little bit as well. But Last weekend against Port Vale was encouraging. So there's there's a, there's a feeling that we we could still potentially stay up. You know, we know it's not going to be easy, but we think of all the teams down at the bottom, we're probably going to be the ones. And this is unique for us. It's never really happened for us that we're the ones who probably got the strongest position in terms of being able to bring players in. I mean, I've got so many questions. Um, I'm going to start Go off with talking about a little bit about recent form, and then we can delve a little bit deeper into the ownership, mm -hmm. January, everything that else, uh, everything else that comes with it. Um, so yeah. it was nine without a win before the victory against mm -hmm. Port Vale, and you were trailing up until the 80th minute. Somehow managed to yeah. turn it around. And is it a result that can turn around your season? It feels huge when you go off and lose so many games, and yet you know here's an opportunity to win one and you and you did, really did take it in the well, 93rd minute i think it was we we, we have this habit in, in, in the last month or so if we put in a good performance in a game like we, we drew 2-2 with northampton we should have won it they scored in the like the 93rd minute to equalize and we followed that up with an absolutely abysmal performance against cheltenham then put a fairly decent performance against fleetwood and then put a pretty damp squib of a performance in against Wigan. And we followed up with a good performance against Port Vale. And I'm not trying to give you guys too much hope here, but that's been our problem consistency. It's not following up with one good performance with another good one. And that's been the case all season. So and there's a feeling that these re reinforcements can make a difference. Um, I really hope we can kick start the season because the circumstances, the way we won it as well, you know, to get that 93rd minute winner. And we deserved it. We were the better side, comfortably the better side, but. Port Vale scored from their first attack at the start of the second half and there was a feeling of deja vu, here we go again when that went in because first half we dominated. But it's we, we dug in and the crowd were really behind them and, you know, the, the crowds haven't really dropped off all season and they're really behind the team. So there's, the takeover really has helped in that sense of giving, giving the fans a, a bit of belief and there's a hope that that, that result, I mean, if we'd lost that game, that probably would have put us in a position of like, oh, we really, really need to win at Exeter. And well, I think we still do. But um, there's a kind of feeling of that at that point, you're like, it, it dents your confidence even further. To get that win to start the year really, really lifted everyone. Yeah, you kind of mentioned what had kind of gone wrong during that uh, that winless run. It was nine without a win. Um, it was the consistency, I guess, before that. You know, I think that there was there had been a win in the game before that. And then before that, there were, there were two consecutive losses if i remember rightly um but what, what, what was going wrong on the field during those games because i think you know a lot of extra fans may not know how how carlisle play um their system i think it's a three five two isn't it 
but what what was going wrong on the pitch that, that meant that you couldn't get those results? A variety of factors. I mentioned before Callum Guy. Him mm. getting injured was a big blow. He's a defensive midfielder and he, 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 I think our fans are really starting to appreciate what a big player he is for us. I think he's like our second longest saving player after John Mellish. And, you know, he, he's just a, he's just so good at covering and, and pick it. He's, he's got this real good habit of picking up with target men and basically standing in front of them and, and p- getting the ball that's played long to them, basically. He's really good at screening uh, long balls and things like that. We haven't really got anyone else who can replace by that. We're trying to get Owen Moxon on us to do that, moment, which means he loses the play of his quality going forward, which is frustrating. Um, so that's been a problem. There has been injury issues generally. I mean, Josh Coyote, we re-signed on loan for the third time. This is going back to September, to be fair. But like he he did his shoulder in his first game, which was in the trophy against Accrington Stanley, and then played the next game without knowing that he dislocated it. And then he's been out since then. He, the hope was he'd be back for this game, but he's not going to be. He's, he's on a slight setback, so he's, I think he's a couple of weeks off. But yeah, injuries were a bit of a problem and just sloppy goals. It was really, really sloppy goals we were conceding at times. And poor Thomas Early has been nets for us. You know, he was brilliant for us last season. 20 clean sheets, club record in one season. He, he hasn't kept a single clean sheet this season. And he had three games in a row recently where he was just had absolute howlers and they really were howlers as well. And you could see his confidence had dropped. To the point where we've now got a twenty-year-old gay breeze in net for us, because we because basically Simmer got to the point where I, like, I can't keep picking him if if he's going to make mistakes. I'm going to have to make a change here. And he was very reluctant to pick Gabe at first, but he's looked very confident actually in the few games he's played so far. So yeah, there's a variety of factors. And you say we play three-five-two or five-three-two, we haven't really for a lot this season. Actually, we've played four-three-three for most of it, and because just because of the personnel we've had available. And the problem with that is you, we also lose one of our big threats in John Mellish. And John Mellish, he plays as a left-sided centre-back, but actually we, we, we did play 3-5-2 against Port Vale, and I imagine we probably will again this weekend. John Mellish will spend as much time in 3-5-2 in your half as he does in his own. He just bombs forward, he overlaps the, the, the wing-back. He's, he's a real threat, and we haven't seen that from this season. He's been much more disciplined in a back four, and he's played really, really well, but you lose a little bit of that excitement and a bit of that threat going forward. So not having that's really killed us because that that was such a big part of our play last season and yeah it's get, getting a steady lineup is, is is being key and the kind of hope is if we can get these few players in strength in the squad we'll be able to do that yeah it, it does really feel like there's there's hope on the horizon for Carlisle mm-hmm. obviously the new american ownership in the form of the peer tech mm-hmm. family um are they going to provide this sort of transfer war chest i mean you've already got uh, luke armstrong in who i'm going to ask a couple more questions about in a minute but is it is it going to be this big war chest that you've got in January, or, or are we looking at a more long term project here from the family? Uh, both, I think. Um, it, it basically sounds um, like that we're, we're very close to getting a couple more players in coming for this weekend. I think there's one midfielder coming in permanently, from what we've heard, who's, who's done quite well in loan spells at other clubs in the past. So he sounds like he'll be a player who'll make a difference. Um, but yeah, they, they basically committed to giving him money and, and Simo seems pretty happy with that. I mean, Armstrong, he's a club record signing. We don't know exactly how much, but we understand it. It might be about 100 grand more than we previously paid, about a quarter of a million is the, what the rumour is, which is, wow. for us, is unheard of. It's yeah. like, we're generally like, wow, this is like dreamland stuff. And they basically just said to him, like, you know, tell me, tell us who you want and we'll see what we can do sort of thing. And and yeah, it, it, the, the, fr- the word they used was step change budget. Um, and... You know, I've heard anything from as far as it's pretty much doubling the budget we had, and you know we're quite a low budget, so it's not like it's putting us upright with the very biggest spenders in the division. It probably puts us into mid table, <laughs> but it's it's like it's what we've needed for so long because you know the previous owners, look, they're they're very committed fans, but they didn't have the money and they ran the, the club very very stringently on a on a tight budget to make sure we were, we didn't get into trouble and you know. At times they still have to borrow money, which is you know just how desperate it can be at this level. So, so yeah, they they do sound like they're they're basically prepared to put decent money into it, and it sounds like we're going to get some good reinforcements now. But in the summer, potentially, could be some quite exciting signings as well. Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. Um, and you say you know a mid-table budget for League One. I think that's pretty yeah. pretty hefty for Carlisle, considering yeah you know, where is. they've been for, in recent years. We're with us in in League Two mm. for many years. Um, so it does look like there's well, there's clearly a, a lot more money on the table. All right, we've we've spoken about Luke Armstrong a couple of times already. Yeah. Um, he scored plenty of goals last season, but hasn't really done the business since August. And I know that obviously 
uh, whilst at yeah. Harrogate. Um, he wanted that move to Wrexham in, in the summer. Or it was about to go through and it, and it collapsed yeah. right at the final stages. Are, are you confident that Paul Simpson can really get the best out of him? Yeah, yeah, I am. And he's exactly the kind of player we needed. We need a big presence up there. That This season, we've been relying heavily on Joe Garner. And Joe Garner, you know, a bit of a legend at the club. He's, he's, he's his fourth or fifth spell, I can't remember. I think it's his fourth spell with us, basically. And, you know, he doesn't score as many goals as he used to. He can't run as much as he used to. But, you know, he's a nuisance and he's all elbows and he will <laughs> basically give it up. But give your centre-backs a hard time. But he's 35 and he shouldn't be starting for 90 minutes every single week at that age. To be fair, you know, he needs a break every now and then. So someone like Armstrong coming in means we can actually use Joe a lot more sparingly. And, you know... He's a proven player at League Two level. Maybe he hasn't done it at League One yet, but you know, I, th- I think he's ready to make the step up. Every time I've seen him play against us, I've been really, really impressed. He's he's mobile. You know, he, he wins a lot in there. I think he like last season. I think he had the highest number of uh, wins for aerial challenges, something like that. I think in in League Two. So you know, he, he's pretty good at that. We can go direct when we want to, so he'll work with that. Yeah, I, I'm 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 really pleased with it. And I know people are looking say, oh, you know what, one in twelve this season, but. It, I mean, a lot of that was from the bench and it was clear once that move had fallen through, Harrogate were like, look, we we appreciate you probably just missed out on a life-changing move there. We'll get you a move sorted in January. And then it got to the point where I think it was about late October where I think their manager was like, look, we don't want to risk you getting injured. It's not fair in you or us. So let's take you out the fire line here. And as a result, a month later, we were able to sort something. And we were lucky there because I had direct uh, um, head of recruitment, uh, Greg Abbott, who used to be our manager, he obviously he's quite good friends with Paul Furwell, who's the assistant manager at Harrogate, who used to be our captain. So I think he uh, spoke to Paul and said, look, you know, he said, oh, you know, we couldn't afford what Wrexham were offering. Like, we couldn't match that. And I think Paul was like, well, why don't you chat to us and let's see what we can do? And I think they chatted to them and it was like, well, actually, we don't want that much for him. So we were able to sort a deal. So we, we feel like he's one of those sort of players... <laughs> Quite often we'll buy players who are like up and coming and, you know, maybe we're going to pay fees and somebody we can maybe develop. He feels like a player who's coming in who we want to hit the ground running, basically. And, you know, that, that's one area we've been really, really lacking players this season. So I think he can make a difference. Yeah, well, we'll have to wait and see. And he may well make his, his debut on Saturday. Yeah. Things went all right for Wrexham anyway, didn't they? I think they ended up getting Stephen yeah, Fletcher, yeah. who scored a hat-trick yeah, um, exactly. at the weekend. Um you mentioned the goalkeeping situation a little bit earlier, and this yeah. is a, an area that pricks an Exeter City eye because one player who appears to be well out of the side now is former Grecian and fan favourite uh, Jockel Anderson, who I'm sure you've got a lot to say about. Um, I get the sense that he hasn't really set the world alight at Bronton Park. Why do you think that is? Because he's always been amazing in Exeter City colours. That's been polite, I think. Uh, he's... <laughs> In seven games, he had about five absolute howlers. And when I say howlers, I mean, like, I mean, on his debut, he gave away a penalty. I mean, our manager blamed John Mellish for that because he, he, he sent a throw in across the, the the area. But Anderson sort of half tried to control it and then it went loose and he didn't really make an effort to get in and then hold the lad down. Um. He had a really good game against Stevenage, funny enough. He's former club. He's a former club. He had an absolute blinder that day. But then again, he also spilled one in there, but that was disallowed for offside. He was very lucky that day. And then there was another I don't know how was there was another howl about he gave away another penalty. I think he Wickham also, was, was pretty bad, wasn't he? Wickham he got... got sent off, didn't he? Yeah. I think that Wickham was the turning point where Simo had given him like he he defended him a few times. He's like, I can't defend him anymore. So Thomas Hurley came back in at that point. And he just never got started. That's the problem. I think what one of the problems was. He came in for Thomas Holy, and a lot of our fans were looking at that point like, Holy's not done much wrong at the start of the season. He hadn't really played awfully, and yet he's been dropped. And Anderson come in and the expectation, oh, well, he must be brilliant. He must be outstanding. And he and he really wasn't in the games he played. And it's annoying because I know, because obviously I haven't seen him play against us for you guys, and I think maybe yeah. no, no, maybe not for Morka, but I've seen him play against us a few times, and I'm like, he's a decent keeper. He's but, quality. For, I tell you, for whatever he's... reason. He, he's, but basically, he's um, he dislocated his shoulder in November, I think. So he's not back for another month or so, I think, anyway. And it's one of those ones, I think, if Reading weren't skin, we'd probably be looking to try and send him back <laughs> to Reading in January just to just to end the chance over. I think we're probably stuck with him till the end of the season. I suspect that what will happen is we'll probably be going to the goalkeeper in the next couple of weeks because as well as Gabe Breeze has done, he is 20 years old and he has only played for three first-team games. So 
expect to be much to expect him to be the number one for the rest of the season. Yeah, you might have a few goalkeepers on your on your books by the end of January. We'll, we'll have to see. Yeah. Um, but let's look ahead to Saturday then. A real six pointer, mm-hmm. if we're being totally honest. Um, I know that both of us have had them recently. Um, Carlisle have tended to do quite poorly against the Grecians in recent years. Um, we of course beat you up at Brunton Park earlier this season, yeah. um, even if Dimitri Mitchell should have been sent off. Um, yeah, he should have. <laughs> <laughs> what did you make of that game up at Brunton Park? Uh, it was infuriating because uh, when I watched it back, there's an argument that even his first challenge could have been a straight red. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind a, a booking. And it was kind of, when it happened, we're like, come on. And, and I was genuinely surprised that Caldwell didn't bring him off. I thought, sure, he's going to bring him off now because he looks like he's in trouble. But... I mean, fair play. He stayed very disciplined after that, and he, he's a good player, obviously. You know, that, that, I think that's the frustration of if that rec- There's been a few of those this season, and you know, you always think, oh, you know, it all balances itself out over the season. But sometimes you're like, oh, it'd be nice just to get one of those to go in our favour at the actual time. But um, but yeah, I mean, I, I was really impressed. You, well, we were fairly impressed with you guys. We thought, you know, they look a pretty decent side. You know, surely they're going to be right up there for maybe not right up there, but mid table for, for this season. You'd think, and it, obviously things haven't gone well for you guys since then, but. But yeah, our record against you is pretty dire. I think it's fair to say. I think we won one in our last 12 against you, which I think was a 1-0 win in the COVID season. If I remember rightly, I think that was Zanzala scored the goal that day for us, possibly. I might be wrong, but um, wow. yeah, it's going back a bit. A future yeah. Grecian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens on, on Saturday. Um, it comes under very different circumstances, of course. We were nearly top of the league back then. And mm-hmm. now, I mean, we're clearly not in that same position. Yeah. Do you feel confident you can get a result then? Yes, because that, just just cause looking at your guys' form and we well, played Port Vale the weekend and I wasn't particularly impressed with them. I wouldn't be surprised if they got sort of dragged back down because they, they weren't a particularly great side either. And I think the lift we'll have from Armstrong being involved and I'm like, I think he said he might make his debut. I'm pretty certain he's going to make his full debut in that game. I'd be amazed if he did nothing similar for him right in. Even if he only gets 60 minutes out of him, he'll, he'll, he'll want to do that from the start. And if we get two, maybe two more plays in before then, I think that'll give the group a real lift, having three new faces in there. And I think there's a recognition that it is a big game and we probably, at the very least, need not to lose it and not let you guys pull away from us. That, that That's one of the key things. And because it, it, it looks a real bum fight at the bottom of my mouth, looking at it, I'm thinking to myself, you know, I'm looking at Fleetwood and thinking they're on the third manager of the season. They've gone for somebody who's never been managed before, which is just, yeah. just seems an insane thing to do at this stage. And, you know, there's a couple of us down there, who, you know, Chelsea have picked it up. So I, I, I have a feeling there's a couple that might well drop a little bit as well in the league. So I think there's still a chance for both of us possibly to stay up this season, but it's it's going to be interesting because I thought Wigan would pull away as well at the start of the season. They, we drew 1-1 with them and they were outstanding the first half against us. They were ridiculously good and we're like, wow, we've got a point. It's a really good team here. And yeah, if you had it on the point, if I'd taken off, they'd be a bit higher in the league, but I thought they'd be playoff level in terms of it by now, but they've struggled with it. So, so yeah, it's a big game. I think... The hope is that if we can, if, we, if we've got a point, I think most of us will take it right now because it gives us another week to get a few more players in, possibly, and, and have a good go against Oxford. Who, you know, it's a real big test for us the week after as well. Oxford and Barnsley the next two after that. So, yeah, I, I think I think we probably actually will look at this one. I think this is one we probably should get a result at, at the very least. Yeah, well, we'll have to wait and see. Um, really looking forward to the game on Saturday, a proper six pointer, and uh, well, it could be. A defining moment in both of our yeah. seasons so uh you know best of luck i guess um we'll want to take all three <laughs> points though <laughs> that's all for this episode of park life the official exeter city podcast let us know what you want to hear more of via our social media channels and don't forget to hit the follow button so you never miss an episode thanks for listening up the city He's been picked out. Socks down to his ankle. Picks out Stansfield. That's the hat trick. And that's what dreams are made of.